All right, hello everybody in Physics IP1. Um, so basically, uh, I want to try to answer the question or give you a hint on how to set the balloon question up. So basically, when the balloon sticks to the wall, let's say this is the balloon, this is the wall. There's four positives on the balloon. Um, there should be four positives on the or four negatives on the wall that attract it. I, I drew an extra one there. Okay, so basically, what ends up happening is when you draw a free body diagram a bit. So electrostatic force is going to push into the wall because it's attracted to the wall. Normal force is going to be against the wall because it pushes against the wall. Force of gravity pulls down and friction pulls up. Now, friction and gravity have to cancel each other out because if gravity was bigger, it would fall. If friction was bigger, it would slide up. And that doesn't make any sense. And normal force and electrostatic force also have to cancel each other out because, once again, this force and this force have to cancel each other out. Otherwise, it's going to go this way or this way, and it doesn't. So what we could do is we can set equi forces equal to each other in this problem. We know gravity equals mass times 9.1 on Earth. Friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times normal force. Let's just set a force equals kq squared over r squared. Now the reason it's kq squared is because we can assume that the charge on the balloon is going to balance out the charge on the wall. So we could just say, instead of saying k times q times q, we could just say kq squared. Um, r would be the distance between the balloon and the wall. In this case, gravity, the force going down, equals the force of friction going up. And electrostatic force going in equals the normal force going out. So what we can do is with, this, with these four relationships, uh, we can substitute things in. Um, we can say that gravity equals friction, so we can solve for the frictional force. Once we know the frictional force, we could solve for the normal force because we know the coefficient of friction. Once we know the normal force, we can solve for the electrostatic force because they're equal. Once we know the electrostatic force, we can solve for the charge because we know what R is, as K is a constant. So it's kind of just recognizing what variables do we know, what things do we know, and setting this problem up. So hopefully that helps, and uh, good luck.